Merry Christmas in advance, friends. Uh, welcome to God's Eagle Ministries. This is Ambassador Mandy Ogojo Rajo Ogbe. At God's Eagle Ministries, we are seeding the nations with God's word, and God is transforming lives through His timeless truth, one content at a time. We are one in Christ Jesus. Let's say one. Uh, today's it's um, episode nine in our series of. Uh, perfect relationship that is 24 tools um, for building bridges to harmony and taking down walls of conflict in our relationships uh, episode 9 breaking the power of pain true story of forgiveness to a mother on death row by Abba Girl. Uh today is Friday December the 23rd 2022 the Takada content count for you today is 2,220,770. Keywords, relationship tools, relationship, relationship building, building bridges, harmony, vengeance, revenge, forgiveness, lessons, conflict management, pain, stop pain, critical factors, episode 9, judgment, judge, Christmas, true stories, Christmas 2022, Christmas lessons, reconciliation, true story, Restoration, reconciliation, redemption, Abba Jal, uh, Gail, healing, death row. Okay, so before we go on um, to our title today, the episode 9, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for the gift of access to your throne 24-7. Thank you for the privilege to share your word. I ask, O oh God, that you bread life upon this content as I hide behind the cross. I ask that you use my voice to minister to your people who are called by your name. I thank you for a day such as this. Thank you for life. Thank you for um, shelter. Thank you for the air we're able to take in. Thank you for health. Thank you for provision. Thank you for the battles that you continue to fight on our behalf. The ones that we know and the ones that we know nothing about. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. And thank you for Christmas, the greatest exchange for a relationship. Your son who came into the world to deliver mankind. Take all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I ask that this word will ride upon the wings of your spirit. I declare that it will uh, penetrate the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and bone and marrow. And it will start as many that will hear this to be all that you want them to be and to do all that you want them to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So hello friends. Merry Christmas in advance. Uh, it's just going to be today's Friday. So on Sunday it's Christmas. Um, and uh, this is the reason for this season, Jesus Christ. The story of Christmas and birth of Jesus Christ, an outstanding story of redemption, reconciliation, and restoration of relationship between God and mankind. As we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's birth, I would like us to keep these seven outstanding lessons from the story of Jesus' birth for life application this Christmas to make our time of celebration meaningful and life impacting the scriptures we drew these seven lessons from are matthew chapter 1 and 2 and luke chapter 1 and 2 with corresponding prayer of commitment so seven outstanding lessons from the christmas story one prayerfulness and we could find that depicted in zacharias elizabeth elizabeth john mary simeon and anna the question is are you prayerful? Am I prayerful? Are we prayerful? Yes, I am committed to be prayerful concerning the matters of the kingdom of God and life affairs in Jesus' name. Number two, selflessness. First is prayerfulness. Two is selflessness. Zechariah, Elizabeth, John, the foster father of Jesus, Mary, Anna, and Simeon depicted the selflessness in these two books of the Bible. Are you selfless? Am I selfless? Are we selfless? I commit to be selfless concerning the matters of the kingdom and life affairs in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, from prayerfulness, selflessness, wholeheartedness. 
and Mary, Simeon, Anna uh, all depicted this virtue. Are you wholehearted? Am I wholehearted? Are we wholehearted? I commit to be wholehearted towards the matters of the kingdom and life affairs in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, we've talked of prayerfulness, we talked of selflessness, we talked of hold, hold heartedness. Now, purposefulness. Zechariah, Elizabeth, Mary, Simeon, and Anna. The question is, are you purposeful? Am I purposeful? Are we purposeful? I commit to be purposeful towards the matters of the kingdom and life affairs in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five of seven, faithfulness. Zechariah, Elizabeth, John, Mary, Simeon, and Anna. Are you faithful? Am I faithful? Are we faithful? I commit to be faithful towards the matters of the kingdom and life affairs in Jesus' name. Amen. Number six of seven, submissiveness. Elizabeth, Mary, Simeon, and Anna. Are you submissive? Am I submissive? Are we submissive? I commit to submit to divine counsel and life assignment in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, number seven, carefulness. And who are those who depicted this? John, Mary, Simeon, and Anna. Are you careful? Am I careful? Are we careful? I commit to be careful concerning kingdom matters and life affairs in Jesus' name. So here we go. Uh, first, prayerfulness. Second, selflessness. Third, wholeheartedness. Four, purposefulness. Five, faithfulness. Six, submissiveness. Seven, carefulness. So shall it be for you too and those celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this Christmas, 2022, in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's go right in to episode 9 of our series on Perfect Relationship, 24 Tools for Breaking Down Walls of Conflict in Our Relationship. And uh, episode 9, Breaking the Power of Pain, True Story of Forgiveness to a Murderer on Death Row by Abba uh, Gael. Last week, Friday, we looked at episode 8, True Stories, How to Stop the Pain. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. What is judgment? How does the effect of judgment play out in our relationship? True Stories, the effect of uh, Bosola's judgment against her father, Mr. Johnson, and Samata against James. In our series, Perfect Relationship Between Four Tools for Building Bridges uh, to Harmony and Taking Down Walls of Conflict in Our Relationship. So you could get that content on our website. So let's go into today's uh, uh, title, episode, breaking down, um, uh, that is breaking uh, the power of pain. Okay, Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 is probably one of the most misinterpreted of all scriptures. Judge not that ye be not judged. Uh, we talked about that early, uh, last week. We do not know how to make it through our daily lives without judging everybody and every everything around us. We think we are walking in wisdom. We think that we are discerning and that our judgment will protect us from future pain. But nothing is further from the truth. Instead, we create a world of conflict and suffering through the very judgment we think will protect us. It is true that some events have the power to bring momentary emotional pain. However, in order for something to become an abiding torment, we must first attach significance to it. We mentioned that last week. It is this significance that takes a single event and turns it into a life of suffering. Now, judgment is a bottom line. It seems impossible for the majority of our pain to be the product of judgment rather than events. We are so sure that the wrongs we have suffered have imprisoned us in a life of pain. But the truth is that accepting this reality that our judgment produces our pain is the only way out of the maze of lifelong torment. If the event of our lives were the source of our torment, then we would have to control or we'll have no control of our future or we'll would be doomed to coincidence or what is worse, in an attempt to understand life circumstances, we will convince ourselves that God brought or allowed these things into our lives. Some purpose. Of course, subjectively determining that purpose will cause us to decide why God allowed it. In other words, we will have to judge God. Nothing that happens outside of you has the power to hurt you until you judge it. Only when you judge something does it bear significance in your life. Let me say it another way. When people do something, you judge why they did it. 
you decide what their motive was. Once you determine, in bracket, judge the motive, you give that event significance or power. In Luke chapter 7 verse 1, Jesus said to his disciples, It is impossible, but that offense will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. From scripture, we can quickly ascertain that being a disciple and following Jesus does not mean that problems will not come. The religious mind thinks that trouble comes only to those who deserve it. Not so. Jesus said trouble will come. So don't waste your time trying to figure out why. Doing that puts you and, and I right back into a judgment situation. I know people who no longer work with God because the judge that God caused to allow certain th events to happen. In light of their judgment, they thought God had rejected them. As a result, they began to feel rejected. Their false feelings confirmed God's rejection and so validated their false judgment. In the end, they grew angry with God and rejected him. I repeat, Jesus never said that becoming his disciple will protect us from circumstances. However, he did teach us that if we are his disciples, we can build our lives on his teaching and live above the control and devastation of circumstances. It is precisely what he has what he was teaching in this passage in Luke chapter 17. In times of real hardship, even the most committed Christian can wonder, has God abandoned me? Or why does God allow suffering in the first place? In times like this, it can be difficult to see God's providence and provision in your situation. If you've ever felt this way, you are not alone. The good news is that God offers us encouragement in his word. So our reaction is the determining factor, quite honestly. Jesus did not focus very much attention on what befalls a violator. Instead, he went to great lengths to help us learn the process whereby we can protect ourselves when an offense comes. He showed us that our concern should not be about the fate of the offender, but our own. In Luke 17 verse 3, he continued, Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, we may ask, Why should I have to take heed? I am the victim for crying out loud. My offender is the one who should take heed. This is the very response he warned against. We do not fall accidentally. We fall in response to events and circumstances. It is true, there are people out there who wrong us by deliberately attempting to make us fall. However, most offenses have nearly nothing to do with us. People are not doing things because of us. They are doing things because of who they are. In our haste to judge, we assume that they do what they do because of us. Actually, we are so self-centered that we think everything the person does because of us. It is a shocking reality for some to discover that they are not that important to anyone. When the opportunity for, for offenses comes, our reaction is a determining factor. Only when we react in an unscriptural way does the offense bring pain to our lives. Jesus told us what we should do when we are offended. He explained how we should not discuss it with anyone. We should not get others involved. Instead, we should rebuke the offender, not judge him. A rebuke, not judgment, can bring healing. The word rebuke comes from two Greek words. One means upon and the other means to fix a value or to honor. Some translate it as to charge strongly. It could be that rebuking is nothing more than making a person aware of the value of their actions. To say to a person, I know why you did this, is not a rebuke but a judgment. And we can say in a rebuke is this. Uh, all we can say in a rebuke is this. This is what you just did. And this is the effect, in bracket, value it had on me. I repeat that. This is what you just did. And this is the effect or in bracket value it had on me. Nothing more, nothing less. We cannot attach significant significance. We cannot use that action to judge what kind of person she is or he is. We can tell the person that she or he has done this thing often. But we cannot judge the motive, the intent. We simply say, this is what you have done, this is how it affected me. Most people are surprised when they learn the effect of their actions. The reminder of Luke 17, 3-4 gives us what should be our motive for rebuke. And if we repent, forgive him. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt 
forgive him. Our goal should be to bring the offender to repentance. The goal cannot be punishment. Punishment is a penalty that we think a person deserves based on our judgment. Judgment precedes vengeance. Until we pass judgment, we have no desire for vengeance. Remember, we have no right to vengeance. God said vengeance belongs to him alone, Romans 12:19. The mere fact that we are seeking vengeance indicates, indicates that we have already passed judgment. In most cases, when someone learns how his or her behavior is affecting us, the reply will be, I didn't know. Then the person gets to learn how to be more tasteful in his or her behavior. At that moment, a healing can happen that sets us free from the pain of the offense. Seldom does a confrontation of this sort become aggressive unless the offended person passes judgment. True healing happens when everyone benefits from the event. I repeat that. True healing happens when everyone benefits from the event, not put downs. When a person offends us, we can take it as an opportunity to experience the grace of God. We can use it to grow in love and mercy. Through it, we can experience in God something that we may have never had before. The offender too can experience something from God through the situation that he may have never experienced. For many people, this can be the input they need in order to stop offensive behavior. Sometimes when we confront others, we discover that we are too touchy. In other words, there was no reason that the action should have hurt us. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is not touchy or oversensitive. Even when the issue at hand turns out to be our problem, we can still win. We can gain insight into our beliefs and actions and have an opportunity to experience healing and freedom. When we handle offenses by using sound communication and relationship principles, we stop pain before it becomes torment. In a scriptural confrontation, everyone has a chance to grow. I repeat that. In a scriptural confrontation, everyone has a chance to grow, not put down. Everyone has a chance to experience healing. The circle of pain and torment can end for everyone involved. Now, what I just said, just came up with, there's a story I just picked up on, on the internet and I'd like to share to uh, authenticate this lesson that we learned today. Let's end today's episode 9 with a true story of the power of goodness, the healing power of forgiveness by Abba Girl, set in the United States to drive home the point we are making today about judging forgiveness. Now, the healing power of forgiveness by Abba Joel set in the USA. Uh, this is the abridged version. There's a longer version. If you go to our website, you'll get all of that. There are links there. Um, and uh, Joe calling USA. All right. Detective Landry was gentle as he spoke those terrible words. I am sorry, but your daughter Catherine is dead. She was murdered, stabbed to death. My heart broke. My brain couldn't think. Nothing was real. Surely I would have. I would wake to find the nightmare was over. I couldn't let anyone hug me for fear I would break. I couldn't cry for fear someone might hear. With the shower running full blast, I screamed and screamed and screamed. People thought I was fine, but a deep dark rage boiled. All I thought about was revenge for the death of my beloved child. Douglas McKay was arrested, tried, convicted, and sentenced to death. People said, once this villain was executed, I would be well again, not knowing any better. I believed them. So I waited and I hated. After eight long years of darkness, I took my first step toward healing. In a meditation course, I sat, quieted my head and was present. I began taking mother to church. I found not only myself, but the image of God in me. I became aware of being a beloved child of God. I saw an interview with a Jewish Holocaust survivor. Survivor, He forgave not only the German people, but the actual guards who killed his whole family. When I heard his testimony of forgiveness, something in me became clear. I thought perhaps I could forgive the man who murdered Catherine. One evening, a friend suggested that I let the murderer know of my intent. I was outraged. No way would I communicate with him. This was between God and me. 
Because as I drove home, I heard a voice. You must forgive him and let him know. An exclamation mark. The voice was so loud and convincing I didn't sleep. At four in the morning, I found myself typing a letter to the man who murdered Catherine. I can still feel the shivers going down my spine as I close the mailbox. All the anger, rage, and loss for revenge simply vanished. In its place was the most wonderful feeling of joy and peace. I knew in that holy instant, no one had to be executed for me to be healed. I had been healed by the simple act of offering forgiveness. To my surprise, I received a gentle and kind reply. Douglas, the murderer, expressed sorrow for his crime, adding that he understood how empty such words might sound. He wrote, Child, your letter meant more to me than I can ever tell you. The knowledge that I inflicted such terrible pain on you was a body in my heart and so could not bear. Your letter of forgiveness released me of that pain. Mark that word. Your letter of forgiveness released me of that pain, knowing you were able to deal with Catherine's death and find new source of love and wisdom to, and gave me exquisite pleasure and release my soul's agony. I will gladly give my life this instant if it will in any way change that terrible night. I realized that the night Catherine lost her life, Douglas lost his future. Hmm. I repeat that last statement. I realized that the night Catherine lost her life, Douglas lost his future. Now, what this this brings us to the end of the series Perfect Relationship uh, Tools for Building Bridges to Harmony and Taking Down Walls of Conflict in Our Relationship. Today is episode 9, uh, Breaking uh, the Power of Pain Through Story of Forgiveness to a Mother on Death Row by Abagjal. Seven outstanding lessons from the story of Jesus' birth for life application this Christmas. I hope you learn something that can be applied uh, to your situation um, as we discussed today, especially concerning Abba. Question for you. In reading and meditating on our post today, have you noticed similar patterns in your own relationship that you want us to discuss with hope? with the hope of dealing with these negative patterns. Please let us know. We will be eager to help out. Um, our email, info at otakada.org, O-T-A-K-A-D-A.org. And both WhatsApp and SMS numbers are plus one, the US number 240-728-7276. And uh, the Nigerian number is plus 234-803-283-5348. Until then, shalom to you and your entire household. Stay out of pain and suffering by staying out of judgment, for judgment belongs to God. And have a wonderful Christmas in Him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is Ambassador Monday. God's Ego Ministries, where we are seeding the nations with God's Word, and God is transforming lives through His timeless truth. One content at a time. We are one in Christ Jesus, so let's stay one. So, Father, I just want to thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you brightly and give you peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. May those expectations that you had for this year that has lagged, that has dragged, come to fruition before the year runs out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare, proclaim, heal, be healed, be delivered, be restored in your spirit, soul, and body, and all around you. To the glory of God Almighty, and your blessing, our blessing, in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay in peace and live in peace. Amen.